نحمده ونشكره نعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم وسلم عليه وعلى آله في كل آن وحين وارض اللهم عن أزواجه وذرياته وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته وحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته أما بعد يقول مولانا عز وجل في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم عن دينه فسوف يأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه the meaning of the ayah, O you who believe, whoever amongst you apostates, rejects, leaves their deen. فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ Allah will replace you by others. O you who believe, whoever amongst you Apostates, leaves their deen. Allah will replace you by others. The first sign Allah mentions of those others that Allah will replace them with, yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahum. He loves them and they love him. This is the replacement. Now, we, for the past what in the city since 2000, so it's 22 years, all going on almost on 23 years. And then 10 years before, about 30 years, we've been talking about the centrality of love and mahabba and this deen. And the importance of being creative and innovative in a good way to make events and have events around the love of Allah Azza wa Jal and the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam around that as a central theme and occupy our minds as a minority community, as a Muslim community in this good country in how do we not only infuse love in our own hearts for Allah Azza wa Jal and for his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But how do we maintain that as well? And how do we foster an environment that is conducive to that? Taban, uh, you know the struggle. Yani this call for love was met by lots of mockery. Oh, the darwish stuff, darwish business and that you're doing. Din, we have to learn who open who, who's who's telling you not to learn please learn. like and what good is information if it's void of love and attachment and devotion tell me 
So we've replaced the masajid and we've borrowed from our evangelical brothers in Christianity. Allah guide all of us. The evangelical approach of preaching, I'm not against anyone, there's not putting anything down, I'm just stating a, an observation. Feel good lectures. To the point that people went to self-improvement courses and infused them with their Islamic teaching because that's what the public mood is seeking. I guess it rubs off. Feel good is good. Feel good evaporates quickly. You can't build a lot of things on just feel good for half an hour. When it came to, let's say, talking about the love of Allah Azza wa and the love of the Prophet Sallallahu we were told that this ought to be information. We need to have more lecture about that. And Iman, we need to have more lectures. So bring, let's bring more lectures. And every time our Iman goes down, we ask for another lecture, as if lecture is a love through IV, put through right the vein, and inshallah, everything goes well. And we've confused realization with information. We've confused ma'rifa with ma'lumat. I remember here in this, in this nice, beautiful city, year 2000 or one or two, something like that. We did a small gathering for what we called expressing happiness for the birth of the Prophet here on Jimmy Carter, and I remember that we got calls of shirk has already come into town, and now kufr is going to prosper. In reality, voiding people, detachment of people from the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, and from the experiential iman, not the informational iman. from experiencing Iman and Mahabba and love to Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what leads to Kufr and Shirk. And it did. I don't know about all the statistics they're talking about, but if these things are correct, then it's alarming. It's inevitable in a place and time in the world, in a world that's run by very powerful information that sways people left, right, and center. Values are no longer values. Lots of things are no longer. Where reality or facts, the truth itself is made to be relative. Relative truth. So you can do with it whatever you want. Obviously, these things happen. Even the Quran al-Kareem, yani the Quran which is supposed, supposed to be, sure, there's information. But there's experience as well. Yani. Alleged al hadith da'if, lakin all the mufassirin use it. They said when Surah Al Rahman was revealed, fi Mecca, Surah Al Rahman was revealed in Mecca. You know, in Mecca, Muslims were around 70 people at the end of the journey, yani. Less than 100 people. Yani 13 years, day and night, and Nabi Al A'zam, and Rasul Al Khatam Al Afkham. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is working day and night and less than a hundred people eventually became came with him and eventually moved to Medina. That's it, hundred. Hey, Taban, you look at quantity or quality, whichever you like. Uh, in these atmospheres of Mecca, Surah Al Rahman was revealed. Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Ar Rahman Allama al Quran Khalaq al Insan Allama al Bayan. We've talked about that so many times. You know the atmospheres in Mecca were atmospheres of terror. That's the least thing I can describe it with for the Muslims because properties were confiscated simply because you're a Muslim. You were banished from your own home because you're a Muslim. Uh, you were uh, fought with business. Business, they didn't want you to have to establish business. Why? Because the, the Meccans and Quraysh in Mecca, because you're Muslim. You all know the hadith that, that one of the Sahaba loaned somebody money and, he, and when the time came due, he says, give me my money back. He says, I heard you believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, yes, I do. He says, and you believe in an Akhirah? Then he says, yes. Then he says, I'll give you your money in the Akhirah. Why are you in a hurry? It's okay. You believe, so pay for your belief.
In these atmospheres of terror came when Surah Al-Rahman was revealed, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, Allama Al-Qur'an, Khalaq Al-Insan, Allamahu Al-Bayan. Oh, allegedly, one, the Mufassirin mentioned one of the Mushrikeen in Mecca, one of the Kuffar in Mecca, was listening to these ayat and experiencing the Imani atmospheres infused in these ayat. Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allamahu al-Bayan. He said, Inna hadha, inna lahu la halawa, wa inna alayhi la talawa, wa inna alahu la muthmir, wa inna asfalahu la mughdiq, wa ma huwa biqawli bashar. He says, this kind of talk cannot be something a human being can say. This is such a fruitful tree. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. There was more interaction with the deen. You all know the Sahaba al-Kiram radiyallahu anhum fi Mecca who died in Mecca. Did not make it to Medina. They were not there to witness the revelation of the whole Quran. The whole Quran was revealed over 23 years. Those Sahaba who were in Mecca, they lived only 13 years of the Meccan phase. Let's say even if most of it. They passed on. They did not know all the ayahs of the Quran that were revealed. And you all know the Meccan phase, the salah was not made mandatory. Salah was made mandatory towards the end of the Meccan phase, Isra and Mi'raj, right before Hijrah. Zakah was not made mandatory until after Hijrah to Medina. Shuf. Salah was Zakah. Hajj, when did the Prophet Sallallahu do Hajj? Year 10 of Hijrah, after 10 years of going to Medina. Most of the ibadat were not there in that organized structure that we see it today, or that became eventually crystallized in Medina. Then what made people look at this deen and be transformed by this deen? Couple of things, many things, but mostly a couple of things. Number one, how this deen looked at the creation, or the relationship of the creation vis-a-vis -vis the creator of all, and the creation vis-a-vis -vis the, the rest of the creation. It's liberating to worship the creator of all, that your minds cannot conceive but recognize, that your imaginations can never capture, but submit to. That intellect can never comprehend, but surrenders to. The creator of all, that is all loving, wadud, all merciful, rahim, all forgiving, ghafoor, gives you opportunity after another opportunity. All knowing, alim, all seeing, all hearing, Shamir, Basir. To him, his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he started this whole thing, yani he willed for things to start with rahmah. Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an. Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. And then the relationship of the creation with the fellow creation. Thou shalt do no, no harm, thou shalt do no oppression, no injustice, no lie, no stealing, no killing, no. These things, you look in the first ambassadorship to Africa by Sayyidina Ja'far bin Abi Talib, and you see how he spoke to the king of Abyssinia at that time, where he told him about what Islam is really like. Ja'far speaks to the king of the Christian kingdom there about the Prophet Sallallahu message. He says, look, we were people of Jahiliya, which means what he tells them. Basically, he summarizes, he says, look, if we can do things and get away with them, we'll do them. We didn't honor our neighbor. We didn't really give an extra thing for relatives, unless they are always with us. Then we did not uh, help the needy as much as we want, as we should. We did, did this, etc., etc., etc. And then he tells him, until Allah Azza wa Jal sent a prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from amongst us, we know him. He guided us to do that which is better. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You notice in the Quran, 
الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن not just حسن not just good who amongst you is better than just good good is expected you say wait a minute good is expected of course Allah says in the Quran هل جزاء الإحسان إلا if you do good and you and you get harm in return, which we've all experienced, I understand. But Al Quran expects that isn't the reward of good someone who does did you good? Isn't the reward that you do good back? Reciprocate? Isn't that the minimal? That's the minimal. That's being good to those who are good to you. Minimal, like in the Quran, he stipulates higher. He says, "Ahsan wa amala." You gotta be better than just a minimal, better than just good, better. With the hadi he recited, recited al haya. This is the message of life. Live however long you live. Better than just average is what's expected of you. And the least minimal you can fall on is good. And we all can do things. And what are you doing? We went last week to visit in Morocco Al Qadi Iyad, rahimahullah, who died year 544 of Hijrah, who wrote the book, authored the book, Al Shifa, Fi Shifa Fi Hukuk Al Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the most famous book in its category. Probably it's a category on its own. Lakin yal haq bi kutub shi sirah wa shama'il, etc. And Al Qadi, he was a judge, he was a jurist. He wrote a book. This book called Al Shifa means the healing. Look at that. <laughs> the healing by reciting the hukuk, the rights of the Prophet. Yani just by indulging in the seerah of Rasulullah, this is by itself is Shifa. And Shifa to those who have not found the truth, Shifa for those who are still looking for completion. Anyway. We read the first chapter, the last chapter, etc. There were some of the people there. And then we left. And I said to the brothers that were with me, I said, the dead are visiting the living. They said, I mean, Sheikh, the Qadi was not uh, martyred, but he was living. <coughs> no, you don't have to be living just because you're martyred. The dead, we are all dead. Dead because we're going to die. The fuqaha says, Al hukm will say, Al hukm ala shayi far'un an tasawurihi. Yani, since you are a contingent being and death is inevitable, you're as good as dead right now. Just, I mean, you're walking. You're a dead man walking. Because it's inevitable. Since it's inevitable, then it's just a matter of conclusion. And that dead man walking, what did he leave? This Qadi that died 544 of Hijra. Today we are in 1444 of Hijra. Yani almost 900 years ago. Until today, whatever he left of effects, we're still following and we're still benefiting from and we're still going and we're still reading and all this, and we're still saying Rahimahullah, and we're still all this. Who's dead and who's living, really? Who's the dead? And that's why I said the dead were visiting the living, not because he's necessarily a shaheed, but because, like allegedly what Sayyidina Ali mentioned, nasu mawta wa ahlul ilmi ahya. People are dead. And the people of virtue, those who leave virtue, are the living. That's why the more people leave, the more living they, they live, the longer they live. We've always mentioned living is giving and giving is living. And those who give more live more. And the anbiya gave more, hence they live more. The shuhada gave everything. The shaheed, the martyr gave everything. That's why he's living. He gave all he has. In all kinds of aspects. We are today having, a, there is a challenge. 
a challenge in people, not just with Muslims, people leaving religions altogether. And people's attachment to religions have been very uh, informational rather than experiential, devotional, love attachment. And that's why the hadith is so dangerous, I see it, as I see it, and I'm sure you all agree. Hadith al-Bukhari Muslim narrated in their Sahih on the authority of Anas radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين One of you would not be a believer until I am more beloved to him than his children, his parents and all people. And the danger in this hadith is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes iman contingent and we can say the complete, completion of Iman. Yani I don't want to say you would not be a total mu'min. I would, let's say the scholars mentioned that your Iman is not complete until the Prophet ﷺ is more beloved to you than your children, your parents, and all people. It's a story of Iman that's experiential. This is not informational where you can just say, you know what? Yeah, I love my children because they're my DNA. So good. You love your children with your heart as well. You love them with your mind. You love them with your heart. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that our Iman would not be complete until he's more beloved to us than that. On all levels and all dimensions. And now we can see why. I'll tell you this and you all already know it. Just look. When the Ummah was close to the love of Allah Azzawajal and was close to the love of Rasulullah ﷺ, the Ummah was doing good irrespective of the information that was available to it. Yani today we are in the age of information, I understand. And information is so widely available, so to the point that you know, we have uh, uh, these memory sticks walking around. No problem. That can you know your grandparents, maybe your great-grandparents, maybe who did not read or write, never were schooled in any academic institution, modern academic institution or university, but they had taqwa of Allah Azza wa in their heart. They had the love for Allah Azza wa in their heart. And they had the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi in their heart. They would do anything. You all knew, and I'm sure many of you know, and I know personally people in the old days. <laughs> yeah, yani I caught them towards the end of their lives. That you keep mentioning the name of Rasulullah ﷺ, they start tearing. So we can look at what, how, what, where were we and where are we. They may not have known knowledge. They may have not read books. They may not have had library with thousands of books in their homes. Maybe they barely had the Quran. And if they could, they probably just knew Al-Fatiha and a couple of small surahs. But you know what? Those small surahs they knew, they knew with devotion. They knew they've experienced Iman through them. Those small surahs that they memorized were the ladder to go to the highest level of heavens. This articulate talk that we've became masters of lately that has empty backbone like jellyfish doesn't get us anywhere might look good might feel good for half hour when the ummah was close the ummah was good the iman was intact it was unheard of to hear that people uh, have doubts in their faith have doubts in their iman have doubt. this was not something that was that was there The problems were, how do I practice better? That was the problem then. Today, that's not the problem. You all know that. We live in, obviously, we live in a much more open society. Lots of influences. Lots of people embracing the faith also. Some of them bring their prior, previous information with them. Con, con, you know, confound, conflate, lot, many things. Some of them... Some of us just see, simply are influenced by what's, whatever is out there. Lack of 
devotional experiencing of Iman, turning the masajid into information centers, fighting each other for the past 30 years, 40 years here, who is bid'ah and who you should not go to versus who is not bid'ah. Bid'ah squad we had. And, and we had people with thermometers of Iman, as if Allah gave them a thermometer, uh, they check people's uh, temp temperature. Do you ha are you mu'min today 100% or 60%? Do you have security on your own Iman? The depriving of the community from events and the centrality of devotion and experiential love for Allah Azza wa Jal and for the Prophet Sallallahu while injecting them with information about the deen created this wedge between the new generation and the kind of Islam they have and the actual experiential Iman and the love and the devotion for Allah Azza wa Jal and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to be honest with you, Al-Quran actually puts it straight. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, man yartadda minkum an deenih. O you who believe, whoever apostates amongst you and leave their deen, Allah did not say, Allah will replace you by people whose faith is strong. Nor, nor Allah will replace you by people whose information is so solid. They've read so many books. Nor did Allah say that Allah will replace you by people who are articulate in their speeches. Nor did Allah say Allah will replace you by people whose aqidah is so, so firm. All that Al-Quran did not mention. Allah said, which means Allah will replace you by people whom he loves and they love him. Indicating what? Your problem was never information. Your problem was never a doubt that just occurred to your mind. Your problem, if you've apostated or you've left the deen, you've left the deen or you've been weak in the deen, is you really never had love for Allah or His Rasul in your heart in the first place. It was not there. You were talking about Allah. You never talked to Allah. You were talking about Islam and Iman, but you never lived Iman. You made Iman appear in the mind. The heart was singing a different tune. Totally. Well, how do you expect reconciliation then? The mind doesn't fight by itself. The heart is the dynamic engine behind that fight. That's why Allah in the Quran says, Inna hala ta'mal abusar. The eyes are not blind, but the hearts are. The eyes see, but the hearts can't see. Therefore, I'm saying this because of the survivability of the community of faith, as, as, as concerning as this word is. Because definitely things are not, it's just a human thing. In order for this community of faith, and any community of faith to survive, you can't wait for the maturity of academic terrorists and you're telling you bid'ah or kufr or shirk for the last 40 years, right? These three things, kufr, bid'ah, shirk, kufr, bid'ah, shirk. We'll learn another word at least, learn something else. Today you see them, they say, okay, no, the mawlid is no longer shirk. Let's celebrate it under the name of sirah. Ya Habibi, don't even celebrate. I love you anyway. Just don't spread hate. Don't celebrate. If you don't want to celebrate, don't celebrate. Just don't spread hate and takfir and tabdir. Don't be, don't be a highway robber intercepting people from getting where they need to be. Just you work on yourself. Take 20, 30, 40 years until your academic and spiritual maturity arrives. Khair. What happened in these 30, 40 years? We've lost many generations. Trying to play catch up. It's difficult. It's not easy. Destruction is always easy. Building takes a long time. Not, we can always put under new management signs, if you like. That makes you happy. Still requires lots of process and work. So today I think what we should 
in these days of the blessed month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, where we are experiencing, and the Rabi'u al-Thani, and the whole Rabi'u, experiencing the atmospheres where we remember it was the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I remember in, in, in this place, in this city, and other places, I mean, mentioning the word Mawlid was taboo. I said to them, have you read Sahih Muslim? It says it's Sahih Muslim. وَسُئِلَ عَنْ صَوْمِ يَوْمِ الْإِثْنَيْنِ فَقَالَ ذَاكَ يَوْمٌ وُلِدْتُ فِيهِ He was asked, صلى الله عليه وسلم, about the day of Monday, why you fast? He says, it's a day I was born in. I mean, to this point, this sort of what I call, again, terror, academic intellectual terrorism, until this point, you can, oh, you can say, oh, Allah Akbar. I think we all, as a community, not just in this, in this country, but also in the Muslim community in the world, needs to really re-pledge its devotion to Allah Azza wa Jal and to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the Tawheed of Mahabba. Yani Tawheed of reinvesting in fostering, infusing, developing love for Allah Azza wa Jal and for His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam based on the Quran and the authentic prophetic Sunnah. And making that an absolute priority because this is the only way you can save the house. The village is already on fire. These information sessions that we've been, and, and our evangel Islamic evangelical approach that we've delved in for the past 30, 40 years, the feel-good sessions that we call this deen and teaching, they have, an, they have a space, but this does not build characters necessarily. Nor does it establish someone firmly on the Quran and the Sunnah like the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca. There was not much salah going on, fard. there was not zakah being mandated, hajj was not performed. But those people were disciplined on their relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal and then their refinement that they had and their love for each other. And you see, you hear all the stories in the seerah, their love for Allah Azza wa Jal, their love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You hear the story of Bilal, when they were torturing him and almost burning him, literally. And you know, if anybody of you walks in the desert, this is not first degree burn if, you don't, if you're barefoot. It's more than that. Yeah, I mean, I get burned sometimes simply by touching a car in the middle of the desert. Right? Ahadun Ahad Bilal, they put this thing, burning thing on his, on his bare chest and he keeps saying, Ahadun Ahad, Fardun Samad, La Walidun Wala Walad. Don't think that when Bilal radiallahu anhu is saying, Ahad Ahad, he's trying to tell you, I already have information. He already believes in Allah based on ma'rifah and transformation and love and devotion. You can never take that out of his heart. It's not just a word he's repeating. When the Sahaba in one of the battles, uh, they're all hemorrhaging and they're all thirsty and they need a drink to survive, to replenish the fluids and the small jar of water that may give someone an extra hour or two of life. And he's looking, he says, you know what, the next one to me is more injured to give it to him. And then it goes and it passes all the way through every single one that was injured in that battle until it comes to the first one and they all died, favoring one over themselves. Welcome to Islam, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Sunnah of not exclusivity, but inclusivity. Of not, I am righteous. Everybody else is mubtadi' mushrik kafir. Allah al -Azim. Wallahi, I was in the UK. I'll tell you this. I know time is up. I'll finish this. I was in the UK, invited to the University of Bradford one day, yeah, 10, 10 years ago or so. One of the, now I mentioned the name of the, I shouldn't have. One of the people I, preachers here. Yeah. I heard, he said, I heard, I heard you're in New England. Can I come see you? I said, come see me. He came. I said, come sit next to me on the podium. He came. He whispers to me, he says, at least two thirds of these people are mushrikeen. In front of One of them are Muslims in front of me. Ay wallah. Ay wallah. Why ya akhi inta? 
Oh, they're gathering around the Mawlid. At least two thirds are mushrik, like this. There's at least a thousand people, if not more, in the hall. I told him, get out. What kept a lot of our people on the faith of Islam was love much more than information. <coughs> information is important. That's why, look, we can do whatever we can here in the masajid. You all know. I mean, but masajid are part-time services. People come in Juma, and most Muslims do not come to the masajid anyway. Numbers, statistics-wise, right? Those who come, they come, they want to do their fard and leave, and mostly the young people are not there. The young people are being graced by other values, other value systems. You know the continuity right there is in your hands. If you don't want to bring them to the masajid, which you should, develop an environment of love towards Allah and His Rasul in your homes. If you do not do that, you yourself are cutting yourself off. You yourself are uprooting yourself from your Ibrahim والسلام, your great grandfather Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Khalil al-Rahman, Abu al-Anbiya, the father of all prophets. You are doing that then. And don't wait for people to mature when it comes to the centrality of the love of Allah Azza wa Jal and the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and expressing all happiness in all permissible ways possible. We need to be innovative in trying to be so creative in expressing our love for Allah Azza wa Jal and fostering that and our love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and fostering that in all possibly creative permissible means, all of them. We need to solicit creativity, not shun it. For if we don't, if we don't, we will be held accountable and we shall be questioned on what we have done with our life. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر أشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله الشفيع المشفع في المحشر صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلى من بآثاره مكتفى واهتدى واعتبر On the other hand, my dear beloved, let me just say this We all face difficulties in this life People as they grow, no matter what they are, they face weakness, they face illness. The human being, as Allah mentioned to us, comes in and then eventually comes out, goes out. It's how it is. No one can change this way. This is how everyone, you, no matter who you are, you are about to depart. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our departure easy. And he met, we ask him first to make us maximize the opportunity that he gave us in our life right now. Because we take life for granted and you know life is not for granted. We've had a brother here, Muhammad, who had passed away. Allah have mercy on him, young man, just a few days back. Lots of people through COVID, you all know. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take tomorrow for granted. You've got issues that you need to solve with Allah Azza wa Jal through tawbah and repentance, solve it. You sleep without having fikr and thinking about the ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and only you think about yourself, you've got problems. That's all I can tell you. All right, don't be crazily obsessive like some of us. <laughs> what are we going to do? But you have to have fikr and thinking. How can we be better? What can we do? Either we do it or we die trying. There's no other way. And I'll tell you something you all know. Love is life. The love of Allah Azza wa Jal is life. And the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is life. Wallahi, no matter the difficulties you have, no matter how things become difficult on you, even if everything turns against you, if you are walking with the love of Allah, Allah will provide you nur and light and you will walk and He will guide you through it. No matter how difficult it is, Allah will comfort those who believe in Him. Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. And that love will be your life that is never subject to death. Those who love do not die. 
Those who don't love are dead, even if they're walking. Ibadallah. اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقوى راقبوه مراقبة من يعلم ويعتقد بأنه يرى تزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضى اعلموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويعطي ويمنع ويصل ويقطع ويخفض ويرفع إلا الله واعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فهده يا ربنا سواء السبيل آت اللهم أنفسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا الله everyone of us who came to this blessed place of yours in this blessed hour of yours in this blessed town of yours يا رب العالمين اغفر لنا ذنوبنا forgive all our sins يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين gather us all together and collect our hearts on your mahabba ya Allah and on the love of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on the love of the awliya wal salihin wal salah wal khayr ya Rabbil alameen ya Allah make us among them and make us enter their circles ya Rabbil alameen ya Allah forgive our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents ya Rabbil alameen and guide ya Rabbil alameen our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren and then qiyamah ya Allah keep iman and faith in their hearts ya Rabbil alameen keep them always guided ya Allah surrounded with surround them with people who point them to the right direction ya Rabbil Alameen remove evil people from their from their ways and path ya Rabbil Alameen and ya Allah always gather us with those who are good and those who are leading to you ya Rabbil Alameen ya Rabbil Alameen اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات يا رب all those who passed away يا رب العالمين if they have no one making دعاء for them يا الله you give them رحمة يا رب العالمين for those who are all forgotten يا رب العالمين من أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله you don't forget anyone يا رب العالمين for those who require healing يا رب العالمين you are a shafi يا الله grant them شفاء with your mercy يا رب العالمين يا الله for those who are suffering يا رب العالمين أنت الرحيم الرحمن الكريم يا الله grant them rahmah and karam from you alleviating all their suffering Ya Rabbil Alameen Ya Allah allow us to help each other and be brothers of each other Ya Rabbil Alameen be positive contributors Allahumma gfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahyai minhum wal amwat innaka ya rabbana sami'un qareebun mujibun lil da'wat wa akhiru da'wana an yilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa alih aqim as-salat